to get this coffee this morning? Not here. You have to get one here. Yeah. I, if I were you, now, did you pay for this coffee or you made it at home? So I made. So I just, I, I would suggest don't drink anymore, and, and, but don't leave. No, 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 so, so finish. Yeah, yeah, finish this coffee. Get some, say another one later. Good, good, good. Kelly, who, 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 who is that with you? Are they with you? Yeah. Who are they? Lexi. So Alexis and Lexi. Hello, Lexi. And? Steven. Steven. We don't know each other, do we? We do. <laughs> are you sure, Steven? <laughs> no, the reflections in your face. I, I, don't, I don't see your face. So we do. Hello, Steven. Good to see you again. How are you doing? <laughs> How was your week? Great, great. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you. And now thank you because we can open your word and understand a little bit more about you and who you are and who we are in you. Talk to us. Teach us. Help us understand where you want to take us as people, as church. Please, we need you. Open our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So today, the special Sunday, we are, we are celebrating remembrance. And we are remembering those we lost those who fought for us. So, so I want to stop a little bit discussing the book of John that we'll come back next week. Uh, and I want to focus on this idea of remembrance. Why is it so important that, that this, this action, this thing about remembrance and remembering become part of our life? Why is it so important? How important it is, it is for us as not only as individuals, which is extremely important, but for us as a group as a nation, as a church, as disciples of Jesus Christ. So open your Bibles with me in the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Let's read from verse 24 to verse 28. Exodus chapter 12, from 24 to 28. And as you open your Bibles, I'm going to get some water here. It's not water, it's coffee. No, no, it's okay. She's, she's just complaining. <laughs> she's fine. That's mine. That's Steven, that's my daughter. I made it alone. <laughs> I don't know where my wife is. What happened to her? Is she downstairs? She's my wife. Ah, oh, she's teaching. Ah, it's true. She's teaching. Good for her. Okay. <laughs> Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for all you and for your descendants. So, when you enter the land, God is going to give to you uh, God has promised, observe this ceremony. And the verb observe in Hebrew, in, in Greek, is the same verb, remember. So remember this ceremony. Remember what is about to happen. We're going to discuss what's about to happen here. Remember, because, verse 26, when our kids come to you and ask you, what does this remembrance mean? What's the meaning to you of this thing that, why do you stop once a year and once a week? We're going to discuss that later. And you do this thing about to remember. Why? Is it so important? And then you're going to tell your children, uh, it is the Passover. It's how we sacrifice to our Lord. Because he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. And he spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. Uh, the Israelites did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Father, it's your word. It's our heart. Talk to us. Uh, the word remember, the verb to remember, in Greek, for example, is the verb ana anamnesis. Literally means, no, in English means pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's the prefix ana, that in, in, in English is the prefix re, like redo, it's the idea of again. Uh, so redo, revisit, reheat, yeah, re, you, you, you know what I mean. So the idea of again, do it again. And minesis, or member, uh, it's the uh, radical. Mem means memory. So literally, remember means bring back to mind. So bring something back to your mind. And uh, so literally means uh, force your memory, or do your memory, force your memory, or make your memory work. And memory, hello, Carol. We missed you last week. How are you doing? Hi. Good to see you again. Very good to see you. I didn't see you. Where were you? No, no, it's okay. You can leave it here. I, I will adapt. I will adapt. I'm just going to move this one, Lee. Don't be mad at me. Just because I, I, I need... I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry, Lee. I'm sorry, Lee. I won't do it again. I promise. Just this one. So, it's the idea of bringing back to memory. Memory 
is something essential for us to be who we are. There is no personality. There is no individual without memory. The memory, memory itself has three functions for a human. The first function is the function to process information. So when I give you information, the memory, this faculty we call memory, processes information. For example, I'm going to tell you, uh, okay guys, today, so after church at noon, everybody is going to meet at Lee's house for lunch. We are not. He didn't invite any of us. <laughs> We're going to meet at his house for lunch. So you have to process this information. You have to get this information. So noon, Lee's house, lunch. You have to get this information in process. What does it mean to you? Okay, it means that when the church is over, when service is over, I have to go to Lee's house. It means that, okay, I don't have to cook today. I don't have to go to McDonald's today, whatever you do on Sunday. It means that, okay, so I want to watch the game at noon because I'll be or I watch with Lee. So it's a lot that this information makes you process. Once again, lunch today at noon. So the first thing. The memory is useful for an individual is to help him process information. If you don't have this faculty, if you don't have memory, you cannot process information. So if I say Lee's house and noon today means nothing to you, or you can't properly process because you don't have this faculty, this memory. So first thing, process information. The second thing, memory is useful, it's necessary for humans, is to store information. So it's 11, 15, uh, 11 16. And I'm telling you, okay, guys, at noon, 10 past noon, <laughs> Lee's house for lunch. So now you got this information processed. Okay, that means that I have to leave church and go to Lee's house. You have to store this information. You have to make it, find a way in your mind. Like, like names, for example. Some of us <laughs> struggle remembering names. Let's not judge our fellow <laughs> Christians here. But it's harder. Names are complicated. So you have to repeat the name, because the first time you say a name, Alexis, for example. So now I have to process, okay, so when I look at her face, I put the name Alexis on her face. I pro I'm processing information. Now I have to store, and that's harder, because I have to take the name and remember. So now I have to store. So the second thing, and third thing, the focus of the, the faculty, the memory, helps to bring the information back to light. So... Memory helps you understand, process information, helps you store the information, and helps you bring the information back to life. So when you look at Alexis' face, you have, okay, Alexis. When you look at Lee, you say, Lee, today, noon, 10 past noon, lunch in your house. There's no pressure, Lee. It's just an example. So you need, so you process, you store, and you bring it back to life. There's no personality without memory. If you look, if you know someone, who's been struggling with their memory, they also struggle with their identity. They always try to remember, to bring back who they are. Because the things you lived, your experiences, your knowledge, your past, the things you went through, and how you processed this information is essential for you to be who you are. There's no you. There's no present to you without a past you. There's no individual without memory. There's not the things that were are essential so you can live the things that are today. And what is interesting is that memory not all, works not only for an individual, for a person, but also in sociology, anthropology, we call collective memory. It's when we become a group or we become a nation because we shared experiences. We shared things in the past. And those things that we lived together, they built who we are as a group today. So as a nation, when we are remembering the wars, the ones who served, we are remembering the things that we went through together so we can be who we are today. As a nation, collective memory is essential for this understanding that we are more than just ourselves. The things in the past, they marked us so that who we are today are connected to the things in the past. That's why every nation, every nation, when it's building, it needs the elderly. That's why it's so important. Because one of the functions of the elderly is to make sure that the collective memory is alive. It's water, it's water, Taylor. It's, it's good too, but our coffee is so much better. 
So it's to make sure. So when you ask someone, what's the meaning of that? Why things happen? Why things are the way they, they, they are today? So no, because in the past, that's why tradition is so important in every nation. Because tradition is the attempt to keep the past alive. So tradition is because the things made sense in the past, we try to make them happen in the, in, the, in the present. It's different from nostalgia. Nostalgia is the glorification of the past. It's when you are unable to live the present because you are stuck in the past. The good nostalgia is good. But the problem is when nostalgia, when the past stops you from being the present. But this is, this is, this is not good. But, but tradition, the, the things that okay, we learned in the past, we did in the past, they had a meaning in the past, and we try to keep this meaning in the present, is extremely important for any country, any nation, any group, any church. That's why we're celebrating here, and we keep this tradition, we're trying to keep the past alive, because we have to remember who we were, we were to be who we are. Okay, and why is it so important for us today to talk about that today? We just read the text, can you give me back the verse 24? And this text, this passage here, they are still in Egypt. The people of Israel, they are in Egypt. God had just struck Egypt with nine plagues. Amazing things were happening in Egypt. But they were still in Egypt. They were still slaves. They were still in the land of Egypt. And even before they move, and the tenth plague, before God kills the firstborn, of the Egyptians, of the animals, before everything happens, God says, stop, because now things are about to change. Now, you're going to live a situation, a moment here that's going to mark your identity. It's going to define who you are. Until this moment here, until this moment where they leave Egypt, they are slaves. Exodus uses a very interesting word, a bunch of people. There is no feeling, there is no understanding of a nation. It's a bunch of people together. And God is telling them, now I'm going to strike Egypt and you're going to leave. So the point is, you now are slaves. Your identity, who you are, is a bunch of people marked, characterized by slavery. And now you're going to be free. But you have to understand that your identity needs constantly to be marked, to be defined by this moment where you were slaves and now you are free. So God is calling their people and he's saying, okay, it's about to happen. It hasn't happened yet. And your identity is going to be marked by that. And what is this thing that's going to define, define the identity of God's people? God's going to tell them. And if you want to do at home, we're not doing today, Jen, don't worry. If you want to do at home, read chapter 12 of Exodus to understand uh, or to give a context to what I'm saying here. God's telling them, okay, I'm going to pass, I'm going to go to Egypt and every firstborn is going to die. But, but there's something that you're going to do. Get a lamb, now pay attention, get a lamb, a young goat, get this animal, and you're going to kill this animal. And two things you're going to do with this animal. First, Get some blood of this animal and put on your doors, on the door frames, on the doors. You're going to put some blood there, blood here, blood here. Make sure you have blood in your door. And then you're going to eat this animal. So, so pay attention. We have now a new thing starting. It's a moment here. So get an animal, kill this animal, blood on the doors, eat the meat of this animal. Why? Because God is going to pass or is going to be present in Egypt. And if he sees, if the angel sees the mark on the doors of blood, he won't kill you. So nobody that's in the house will be killed because there is blood on the door. Now pay attention. God is telling the people the following thing. It's not because of you. It's not because of your blood. It doesn't matter if you are Hebrew or not. It doesn't matter if you are your ancestors. It does not matter now. What matters is the blood on the door. If you are in a house, even though you're Egyptian, you are Israelite, even though you're Egyptian, even though you're a good person, but if I see the blood on the door, nothing is going to happen with you. But if there's no blood on the door, you're going to die. It's not about you. The thing that is defining your identity is the understanding that what saved you is the blood of something else. 
what is defining your identity as people of God is the understanding that you were slaves and now you're free. Now you are becoming a nation, but you're not becoming a nation because you are a good person, because you deserve. You're not becoming people of God because you have blood. Uh, do, do you use the expression blue blood in Canada? Great. Because you have blue blood or royal blood. I'm not going to say bad things about the royal blood because we like England here. Let's respect the queen, the king, the person. Let's respect it. Not because you have blue blood. It doesn't matter if your last name is Peters. It does matter. I'm sure if you were in Egypt, God would have saved you because you're amazing. <laughs> have four amazing. But it doesn't matter if your name, last name is Peter. It doesn't matter if it's Bosha. It doesn't matter. What matters is the blood on the door. So what's going to define you as a nation is that you were saved because there was something else, or someone else's blood on the door. When I see the blood of the lamb, I won't kill you. And you will be free. Not because of your blood, not because of your family, not because of your name, not because of your actions, not because you deserve, but because someone else, some things else. Does it make sense? Something else? Blood is on the door. So first, you are free because the blood of the lamb. And the second thing, this the, the meat of this lamb, you're going to eat this meat. Because now you live in Egypt. You're going to a new land. You need energy. You need strength. What is giving you strength to leave slavery and to become free is the meat of this lamb. So eat. The blood saves you. The blood sets you free. When God sees the blood, you won't die. Not because of you, because of the blood. But you still need to eat. Because you're going to walk. You're going to leave Egypt. You're going to the desert. You need to be strong. And the thing they're going to give you strength is the lamb, is the meat of the lamb. Eat the meat. And this, this thing that they are doing has to become a tradition, has to become an yearly thing that they will do because life will change. The people now are going to the desert. And in the desert, it's different from Egypt. The things that God, are, God is doing in Egypt, the plagues, they, will not, they will not be present in the desert. The same plagues will not be there. So the things you saw God doing in Egypt, you won't see God doing those things, the same things in the desert. The desert is a different life. You will have a pillar of fire with you, have clouds following you. You have different food now. The man is going to come from heaven. And then from, from the skies, from heaven. And then you're going to have different struggles. Because now you're learning how to be a nation. You are learning a new law. You are learning how to treat your neighbor. You are learning how to treat each other. Life will change. So what you live in Egypt is not the same thing that you lived in the desert. So when in the desert you are there, once a year, remember that you're only now in the desert. Because there the blood set you free. Not because of you. So remember, life's going to change. And you know what? When you go into the land, life's going to change once more. It's a different life. It's not the life that you had in the desert. Because now you're in the land. You now have harvest. You have animals. You have a bigger family. Things are going to be different. Give me Deuteronomy. No. Give me Exodus. No. Deuteronomy chapter. I'm sorry. Because I was going to read Exodus 12, 13. But I'm not. It's going to be too long. Give me Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verse 15. Too fast, Jane. Come on. <laughs> so, 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 oh, oh, oh. The, God, this, Deuteronomy, Moses is talking to the people. Now, you're about to enter the land. So, remember, bring to memory, that when you were slaves, you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and a stretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commands you to observe. The Sabbath. So once a week, stop and remember. Because your life now in the land is different. You won't have the pillar of fire anymore. You won't have the plagues anymore. Now, your everyday life, you have different struggles. Life's going to get easier sometimes, harder sometimes. The things you live now in the land is different to what you lived in the desert. There is a part in Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 4. I'm sorry, Jane. I'm sorry. So, it's so interesting because now God's telling them, okay, now you're going to enter the land. Your life's going to change. And that, there's a moment 
Oh, that was thank you, Jim. That's fast. <laughs> look at that, look at that. This is a rule concerning anyone who kills a person and flees for safety. Anyone who kills a neighbor unintentionally. Tragedy can happen. <laughs> maybe they are living. What happened to you? Eat my, my, my button over. And maybe you're living in the land and tragedy is going to happen. Accidents are going to happen. Look at that. Give me verse 5. For instance, look at that. A man may go into the forest with a neighbor to cut wood. And as, as he's swinging, I don't know how you swing an axe, but <laughs> just go with it. As he's swinging his axe uh, to fell a tree, the head of the axe may fly off and hit his neighbor and kill the neighbor. Really? This may happen. Yes. Life is, sometimes life is chaotic. Tread is part of life. So in the land... It's not the same that we had in the desert. It's not the same that we had in Egypt. Life changes. Seasons in your life are going to change. Sometimes easier, sometimes harder. But remember, God is still the same. You can only be in the land cutting tree because back there the blood set you free. You can only be in the land with your neighbor trying to build a house because you wait the meat of the lamb. The reason that you are who you are today is because of they were who they were. Remember. Because as life goes by, you will forget. So if intentionally you don't stop and remember the things that happened, how God set you free, you will forget. And you will worship other gods. And you will try to live a life away from God because life changes now. So remember, remember, remember. If you don't remember, if you don't take the time once a week to say, stop, life is hard or life is great now. And we have this moment in our lives. But we are only living this today. We can only be here today worshiping the Lord because the, land, the blood was on the door. If you don't remember the past, the possibility of forgetting who you are is great. And then as life goes by, the past to be each time more in the past, and you will forget who you are. Remember the blood. Remember the meat. So life will change in Egypt, in the desert, in the land. But these chains are only possible, these tragedies, and these good things, because the blood was on the door. Fourteen years later, fourteen hundred, I'm sorry, 1,400 years, 1,400 years after this, the first moment happened that they copied. Give me Exodus verse 12, uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 13. Thank you. <laughs> Pretend that you're looking for the verse. Mm. Look, look, look. The blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So the name of this festival, of this yearly thing, that their identity as a nation of God, they celebrate this every year because they're remembering who they are. They don't need the blood anymore, but if it weren't for the blood, they wouldn't be there. So remember the blood. Remember, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Remember, 1,400 years later, Jesus is with his disciples celebrating this festival, remembering who they are, remembering their identity, remembering that no blood and no meat, there's no people. Give me Luke chapter 22, verse 14. And then, Jen, we're going we're to discuss this later. <laughs> Remember, Jen, I need my coffee. <clears throat> so see, 1,400 years later, Every year, they stopped and they said, okay, life is different now. But you can only live this life because of the blood. Jesus is with them, with his disciples. When the hour came that Jesus was about to be killed, he and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to, he said to them, look, I have eagerly, I desired deeply to spend this Passover, this celebration with you before I die. Remember, this thing that you do is to remind, to remind who we are as a nation. That we were slaves in Egypt. And now we are free because of the blood, because of the meat. 
Because we had strength in the meat and we had freedom in the blood. Remember, so let's remember that once again. 1400 years, remembering, remembering, remembering that even though now the grain we see God acting is different because we don't need the things we need in Egypt. We don't need the blood. Remember, because without blood, there is no nation. So Jesus is there with them. And he's saying, I want to celebrate with you this Passover. God passed over the people before I suffer. Because I tell you, you're not eat again before the kingdom of God comes to its fulfillment. Continue. Let's go into verse 20. 20. Verse 17 says, So, and then, uh -huh. for I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup. So, let's just, just stop for a moment to hear. So Jesus is eating with them. And he takes a cup and he says, give thanks and say, this, take this, and divide among you. Okay, okay, okay. So once again, they're celebrating the Passover. They're celebrating their identity, who they are. They're being reminded that they are who they are because of the blood, because of the meat, 1,400 years ago. And now Jesus comes to them and says, okay, 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 let's do this. So take the bread that represents the meat, and then we divide eat. Remember that strength can only be find in God, found in God. Remember that you are what gives you strength to live. What gives you life to live is God. Is the meat of the lamb. And then he takes a cup and he gave thanks and says, take this, divide among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Verse 19 and 20. And he took the bread, he gave thanks and broke and gave to them saying, this is my body. What? No, no, no. Wait a minute. He took the bread, gave thanks, and this is my body. But no. Wait a minute. We do that. For, we've done that for 1400 years. Because when we sit down to eat, we eat the body, we eat the flesh, we eat the meat of the lamb. To be reminded that because the lamb died, we have strength to live the life. But now Jesus is saying that this is my body. Do this in remembrance hmm, of me. In the same way, he took the cup and saying, this, the cup is the new, oh, new covenant. Huh? The, the, the word covenant in Greek, diatiske, means literally two, parts of two, participating two. Literally means when you come together in two and you make a covenant, you make an alliance. You come together with terms and you say, okay, now we have a bond here. So Jesus is saying, uh, and this bond, okay, <laughs> so, hmm. 1400 years ago, they, they, this covenant, this alliance with God, as we read in Exodus chapter 12, they bound on, they did what the Lord tell, uh, told them to do, happened because there was blood on the door. The blood of this lamb was on the door. But now Jesus is saying that this is the new covenant. In my <laughs> blood, which is poured out for you, so, so, huh. it literally means that. The things they've been doing for 1,400 years. It's a preparation. It's an allegory. It's something to be prepared when the true lamb comes. Amen. Hmm. So now, <laughs> the blood on the door was just a symbol of the blood of the true Lamb. Hmm. That's why the book of John, chapter 1, they're studying together. John the Baptist, when looks at Jesus, his first sentence is this, is the Lamb of God. So the same way that the people of Israel was only who they were because there was blood on the door and there was meat in their stomach, we are who we are because the blood that was shed for us. The same way, that's why we celebrate the Passover, we call Easter, is to remember that we will keep living. Life will change. And there are moments in life that we may be stricken by tragedy. There are moments in life that life will be amazing. There are moments that things we've been praying for, we will see on this earth. There are moments we won't. There are moments we'll be only able to understand what's happening when we are with the Lord in glory. But there are moments we'll be able to see God's hand move in our every day. There are moments we, we won't be able to see. But remember, we can only live the life because blood was on the door. We can only live this life because the blood, not because of our blood, not because we are good and we deserve, but the Lamb of God 
shed his blood for us. This is our identity. This is who we are as Christians. And that's why we know that we try to eat this bread, try to live according to what Jesus told us and how he taught us to live. We try to read the Bible and understand and practice because we need this meat. We need his flesh to give us strength because it's hard to live in the world around us. But we can't do that because his flesh, his meat, the bread feeds us and gives us life. Life will continue, we don't know for how long, but we know that we are who we are because the Lamb shed his blood for us. And now we are not killed by the angel of death because the blood is upon us. What we remember today is that we are who we are because Jesus is who he is. And we can live in this nation here Sometimes we live in great moments, sometimes not so great moments. Sometimes snow comes too early, and then we don't have winter tires, and we end up in a ditch, okay, because of the point today. <laughs> but we can live that because the blood is upon us. Today is the day to remember that life can only be lived because the blood, the meat of the lamb is up, are upon us. The blood allows us to find life. The bread fills us so we can keep living. That's why we come constantly and remember and we learn constantly. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this today. And I'm gonna, I wanna invite Shelly and the worship team to do, 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 do. And we're gonna sing. And as we sing, I wanna invite you, if you don't, if you don't have a cup and a bread, and if you'd like one to share communion with us, if you can raise your hand. Craig and Tim, uh, they are there to, I don't know if that's why Tim stood up, but if it's not Tim, it's our responsibility now. <laughs> and they're going to make sure you have a cup and bread. Have some people in the, fr and as we do that, I want to invite you to bow your head or do whatever you want to do, but take some time to pray. Take some time to remember. See, don't let the present be the only force that keeps you alive. Make sure the past, your experiences, make sure the things that God did for you, they are alive in your mind. Remember. Remember. Because life changes. Things change. Life gets hard and it gets easy. But it's only possible because the blood is upon us. When we remember, we are called to be reminded of who we, this is our identity. Sometimes an axe may fly and tragedy may happen. But we can only live that because the blood and the meat, they are upon us. I don't know the moment that you're living your life right now. I don't know how your everyday life has been. But I can guarantee you that true life is only found in the blood. True living is only found in the bread of life, Jesus. So I don't know how your month has been. It's, it's going to change, don't worry. But remember, even though it's hard, even though the relationships are not as good, remember, there are things we have to remember, otherwise we go crazy. I don't know your relationship with your wife, your husband, your family. Sometimes the present is, oh, it's hard, but remember there's more. And it's gonna, things are going to change. It's going to be better. Or, or if it's a good moment in your life, maybe it's going to be not as good tomorrow, but it's not a point today. Life will change, but it's only possible because of the things that happened in the past. Remember the blood. And as we remember and we prepare for communion, let's worship together. If you may, please stand up and worship with us.